In this episode, we're going to learn how a blind man uses the Groovomatic, Iskandarian Groovomatic. Word of warning, don't Google search that. Welcome to Green is Nice YouTube channel. In this series, we will be delving a little bit deeper into the HZ GTS named Lucy. Right, today we're having a little bit of a play around with the LS again, cutting some o-ring grooves into the deck surface. Um, when you're running boosted motors, once you get to a certain horsepower um, from the boost, you start having head gasket issues. Um, to cure that, go into a set of head studs by ARP and also go on the whole hog and doing o-rings in the block. Um, I briefly spoke on that on the last episode that we did. Um, I've had Steve, like I said, I phoned a friend, had Clarkie come in and help me set up some of the stuff when I'm doing it. I absolutely have to get someone to help me. Um, didn't want to go destroying a thousands of dollars worth of block just because I thought I could do it. So we've done that. Steve's come in, set up. So where we're at at the moment, we've done a five thou cut. Got to go down to 30 thou because we're putting a 41 thou piece of copper wire in that forms the O-ring. So we've got a 40 thou wide cut, 30 thou deep, gives us the 11 thou crush onto the cylinder head for the gasket, running an MLS multi-level layer steel gasket still, one of the GM performance ones. Um, <clears throat> so I'm one of the last bore actually, I've perfected it I suppose at the last one, it's gone really well. Um, Steve got the measurements absolutely beautiful so we had to make sure that we didn't break into the next cylinder, cut into any water uh, galleries or anything like that so we got a really good clearance between the two and we're back just from the bore just enough to um, get a good seal onto the firing so right now I've put this on a bit of white um, rag there on the bench so it makes it easier to see because contrast is my best friend so I put it in on the shifter which I placed in the spot where I knew it was going to be just I nip up this center nut, center bolt, find it where it starts. Shifter should have been at the right distance, but maybe I moved it. So I'll place the shifter right here because we use it quite a bit through the process. So now we're at five thou. We've got to keep going down more. So each turn of this it's cutting when it binds a bit you just got to back up a bit a bit like cutting a thread just put a moderate amount of force down we've sort of schooled ourselves to not stop in the same position each time so you don't get a ledge at the end of the cut so we'll do a few that way and then stop the next one at about 90 degrees out do another couple of that and I'll just nip it to make sure it's centralised in the bore again. Doesn't take much just to put that load back on the four feet that come out. So what we had to do is you set the tool. I'll rotate around here and we'll stop for a second. There's actually a tool on a swinging arm with an Allen key. You set that out to your diameter of your bore so that gets your full circumference or whatever you want to cut. You then drop your tool down onto zero so it just touches the deck because it sits on four little locating feet that are around directly opposite, diagonally opposite each other. Um, check it, we did a quick little scratch to make sure we're on the right diameter, to make sure we had the clearances right, like I mentioned before. The next step was you just lift, lift it up, put a five thou feeler gauge, we cut up a set of feeler gauges, one on each corner, drop the cutting tool down, set it zero onto the deck, then remove the um, five thou spaces and perform the first cut. 
That gave us a five thou deep, 40 thou wide cut. Five thou isn't much, but you could, you could feel it and notice it was there. So that gave me the ability to be able to know that the, uh, basically like a railway tracks, that the tool was going to absolutely locate in that. The next thing Steve um, helped me do was set it up at another 25, because we wanted to go down a total of 30. So we set it up at 25, so the same thing, four 25 thou feeler gauges under the unit, so the unit was risen up. Drop the tool down into the five thou rebate we'd already done. Knocked out the cutters and then went whole hog and went down to that 30 thou. We then tested, um, again with Steve's um, help, tested that the piece of copper that forms the O-ring sat out about that 11 thou. So it, it all worked out really good. So this is where we're at. So like I said, I spent quite a bit of time. It's been a bit of a nerve wracking time to do it because I can't really see if I'm going wrong by any means, but the feel and my hearing has become a um, big benefit to me. I, I really know when things aren't right by feel and I've got in tune with the sound of what it sounds like when it's cutting. I periodically stick my finger down into the groove and sort of see how far it is. I'll, I'll reference off the one beside it to go, yep, well, we're still cutting and we're going down and we're not making two tracks. So I have a bit of a run around. Yeah, it looks like we're on track. Have to be right, it's the last one. Can't wreck the block down. From here on out, the next step is it's got to go away to the machine shop for a pretty simple thing. I'm going to pay to have the can bearings knocked in. I could do it myself, but the tooling to do it's around about $240. Can bearings about $80 to $100, but yet the shops will do it for about $160. So economically, it's certainly not worth me putting can bearings in. It's not that much of an exciting job. It doesn't really mean it to me. I'm trying to do every bit of this engine that I can, possibly myself. Um, I vowed to build something that's capable of withstanding that 2,000 horsepower. Whether we get it or not, we don't know, but um, it can get to it if I need to. We'll get we'll get to that point. But the whole whole setup is it, it's going to run a thousand horsepower all day. 1200 of the tyres, no worries at all. Um, when we need to, at a competition, we will then crank the boost up, spray a bit more gas, and just keep pushing the numbers. Lucy's drive line will be at its limit by then. Um, got a pro glide in it, which is capable of that two and a half thousand horsepower. Built nine inch Cray Molly housings and all that sort of rigmarole, so you can handle it. But it's getting up there. And this this cut you can't pick it up on the camera. But it's starting to make a hollow sound more than the scraping cut noise. This would indicate to me that we're down. I just nip it and it doesn't move much in this, but it just makes me feel more confident that we located fully. I don't want it to look like a railway station with tracks everywhere. Yeah, I think that's pretty much done. Now, next step is get the compressor. Now, if you're wearing headphones, watching this, Headphone alert, I'd get them off. I'd put the safety glasses on too. Um, so, turn your speakers down, headphones on, because this is going to be pretty loud on camera. Hopefully you listen. We've got a little bit of time, the compressor will kick on and drown everyone out shortly. But, I believe, I'm a class A winner. Right, oh. 
Thanks for watching Green is Nice. This is my LS build and uh, the road to Rocky Nats. So Rocky Nats is hopefully where we're going to run it at its first true dyno comp up there, probably at the showgrounds again, like the last year's, this one just gone. We took it up there and put in a few car shows and that, but it didn't actually do any dyno work. Um, yeah, so like and subscribe if you got to the end, you're obviously interested a little bit in what's going on and definitely more videos to come. Thank you.